Hello everybody, Planet Walls here for Playing the Unplayable. I just started a free release sealed. Um, my wife just started the espresso machine. Um, so, Cam Studio just ate my recording a minute ago, but this is the deck I settled on. I will try to work you through my thought process um, and show you what I have to offer here. But this will be a quick deck building video. Blue has this card and not much else. It's got an Into the Void, that's also strong. Um, everything else is kind of mediocre. There's some playable creatures, but not many. White has this and um, a triplicate spirits, not much else. Um, yeah, it's got these midnight guards, which can chain gun kind of with uh, this spell down here. All right, uh, there's some hot soups, which I ended up cutting. Uh, green kind of sucked entirely, even though I wanted to play green. I picked what I thought was green, but I picked the ferocity one, which is apparently red. We've got some good red sideboard stuff, too. Um, let's see. Uh, black seemed reasonably strong, as did red. I cut some of these things, but I will show you the deck, which is down here. Uh, we're playing a grind clock as an alt-win con. Um, we already submitted our deck, so it's okay that we're out of time. Um, oh, God! Well, uh, I will, uh, show it off in a minute and then edit that in hello everybody i'm back you didn't go anywhere probably but i'm just going to finish up uh this playing the unplayable quick uh deck list so the problem was as i mentioned camp studio ate my recording and we're on academy Bybot one account um the way that MTGO Academy operates now on uh, the V4 client is that we just have to pay people to sit and pretend to be a bot uh, when you're trading us. They just sit there like me, and we pull levers. Anyway, um, so this is what my logic was in building this deck. I picked uh, the red one, uh, Ferocity, thinking it was the green one. Um, here are the cards that I like in green. Uh, probably only one of those. Um, what does this do? It draws you a card. It's fine. Like... So these are the cards that excite me about green. The cards that I just pulled out. Plummet, I think, is main deckable. Um, so, like, these four. It's not that great. The other ones are fine. But, um, you know. Hot Soup is playable to me, I think. I don't think it's unplayable. Uh, but there's also this Land War Waste, which tempted me to play green. But I don't think there's anything really worth splashing. Um, in terms of blue, I looked at it. And the cards that excite me... Um, are not Fugitive Wizard, not Hydro Surge, not Void Snare, not that... Wait a minute. Is that Sliver have an hourglass figure like a woman and it has hips and a, like, bikini top on? That makes me very uncomfortable. All right. Uh, this thing does basically nothing. This is fine. Uh, I wouldn't call it exciting. Uh, these are, like... Okay, removal spells for most creatures. It's fine. And this is awesome. Uh, and this is kind of like a cool combat trick that sometimes can just probably win you the game. Um, nothing here was super exciting. In Crest, you can look for it with Heliod's Pilgrim. So I was looking to play blue and white. Like, here's my only other real aura besides those, uh, which makes uh, this guy pretty mediocre. Does that guy have a top knot? Cool. Um, Triplicate Spirit seems good. Uh, you know, if you ever want the ghosts of the Draenei coming out of uh, a hole in the ground. Uh, Avacyn. So I played against a guy the other night in my first uh, attempt at this who had two Avacyns, a restock, and the seven drop angel uh, that puts your life back at 20. That was stressful. I lost to him. Um, he also had a Nyssa. And I had Big Garrick, and I got greedy and just, like, top-decked the Big Garrick right when I needed it after he played Nissa and threw it down instead of attacking intelligently. I was like, yeah, plus one, kill your Planeswalker, and then I just lost. This card seems fine. It's pretty annoying to play against, but, um, I'm not sure how excellent it is. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, I like this removal spell. These guys are not all that awesome. I think two threes are mediocre. Um, this guy's fine. Uh... Sky's decent with blue, can probably win you the game late game. Uh, kind of like those guys in uh, Rise of Eldrazi did. This guy's fine, I guess, but nothing to write home about. And this is okay in, like, a controlish deck. So, um, basically, I didn't think any of the colors were deep enough to play except red and black. Um, here's what the deck looks like. 
double covenant. Uh, this guy I think is fine. We don't have a lot of fat up here, so I felt like he was necessary to play. Um, this card can chain gun kind of with typhoid rats, or you can just like drop it on something and end the game or eliminate a guy. Um, this thing seems fine, even though he looks like the foppishly most lame thing ever. My favorite guilty pleasure are the innocent ones. I think that's how he talks. This guy, I, he looks like he's wearing a chain link fence on his pants, on his uh, chain kilt. Uh, this is just good. That's a burn spell. Um, so, like, these guys seem fine to me. I think a 3 2 is, for 3 is much better than a 2 3 for 3. Uh, these are like mediocre Windrakes. Uh, this thing is just like this, but probably a little better. Um, these guys seem good with Siege Dragon. Um, otherwise, they help smooth out my curve a little bit. And, you know, because I've got uh, this thing here, like, they're not horrible. Um, I was in between playing both and playing a Torch Fiend, which I think is also permissible. This is basically like a three mana shock that occasionally does more. Uh, Grind Clock is an alt win con that I think is seriously threatening and sealed because it's slow format. Um, and so if I draw that in my opening hand, I can sort of play differently. We have an Evolving Wilds. Uh, and I decided to go nine mountains because it's more important than seven swamps plus evolving, even though that means Sign of Blood is a little bit harder to cast early. Um, not sure if that's right. Uh, but it seems reasonable. The cards that uh, are good for sideboarding, probably not Shrapnel Blast, we just don't have enough artifacts, but I could see bringing in Hot Soup occasionally if we just needed to push through. Foundry, Street Denizen, if they have a lot of X1s. Uh, Torch Fiend is decent as a blocker. Rummaging Goblin was a hard cut for me to make. I'm not sure if that's right. Maybe I really want to be playing it. I just figured I would have so much to do with most of the cards that were still stuck in my hand by that time that it didn't matter. And then you've got these Blast Fire Bolts which I think are actually fine removal spells late in the game. Um, it's just that uh, I thought they were too expensive. They're good to board in, I guess. Uh, Circle of Flame is also sometimes fine, probably. Black Cat is like a okay control card sometimes. Child of Night seemed mediocre. So I debated playing this card because I have at least a decent number of zombies, something like six. But I'm just not sure giving those guys cycling is what I want, even if, like, you get a dude for it. It just doesn't seem that excellent to me. Like, I'd rather have this 2-2 flying guy than another card and a 2-2, probably, uh, in Sealed. Though I'm not sure about that. Like, it could be very wrong uh, to play, not play Necromancer Stockpile. It's just, like, so expensive to use the cycling ability, and I didn't want to play that much uh, black. This this card makes me very uncomfortable. I wonder if, like, you know how slivers look like each other? Does this make Sliver Queen just, like, turn sexy? <laughs> Uh, Ornithopter, that's not very good. Um, Radiant Fountain, I decided I wanted better mana than two life. And I think that this card is bad. It could be wrong. Alright, so um, that's basically the deck. Hope you guys enjoy round one. Hello everybody, Planet Walls here. We are back for round one. After some recording glitches, I'm still getting accustomed to the new version of Cam Studio and using the beta, or actual client now. Uh, we would like to play first. Yes, I think our deck is kind of fast. This will be a swamp, and we're going to keep this. Um, we wished our opponent good luck, but it's hard to bring up the chat, so I'll only do it if uh, he, he starts talking back. All right. Uh, what's happening here? Yeah, it's our turn. We're doing all right. All right. So we're not splashing anything. I am accustomed to playing decks in this format where I'm splashing a lot of stuff, but we won't be doing any of that this time. Um, I don't feel that strongly about my deck. It seems okay to me. Uh, Elvish Mystic is fine. Uh, that tells me we're definitely going to want to play the Borderland Marauder unless something really strikes my fancy. But let's find the Swamp and uh, go ahead and take our turn. Our opponent... Ooh. That makes uh, Generator Servant interesting soon. Um, we're going to want to hit, like, one more land, I think, soon. Uh, but for now, we're okay. All right. Uh, the Convoke mechanic I do find to be a bit irritating in this format, because it's basically a, a format where you can get your guys exiled when they're attacking, even though your opponent's t tapped out or something. I'm not the biggest fan of that for a core set draft in uh, sealed format. Um, I'm sure I will grow accustomed. What What's happening here? He's playing red? Alright, so he's probably got this or the Phyto Titan. Venom Sliver. Death Touch. Alright, that's okay with me for now. Um, the question is, do I want to attack into that? I think the answer is probably, but I don't know that for sure. Now that we have another land, like we can haste Siege Dragon in there later and knock out all of his guys. 
Um, so that's kind of important to do. We also have this, but that's not very good with this, unless, because it's only one power. I mean, it's fine, it's not extraordinary. Um, there's also the possibility he plays more slivers. So like, maybe just eliminating his guys for now is what we want to be doing. I, I mean, the way I think it is, we're setting up for the control deck, kind of. Um, so I'll play this. We're going to be playing a Generator Servant this turn. I'm considering attacking, but I think it just trades off with his Venom Sliver. And I'd actually rather just, like, keep this back to block the Venom Sliver. I think that that's right. Might not be. Not entirely confident about that. Um, so uh, let's drop this and pass the turn. This sets us up for a 6-drop next turn. And if we draw another land, 7... Um, yeah, we won't be we won't be attacking this. Our, our creature is also valuable insofar as it can convoke out the Covenant of Blood, help doing that. So, trading is not necessarily what I want to be doing. Um, look at this guy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Look at this guy. I. All these guys look funny. All right. So we do want to see another swamp at some point soon. What is this? This is like hibernation's end on a dude. Um. Okay, so he finds a one drop. Well, this could get out of hand. Um, we want to kill that <laughs> whenever we can, uh, which we might be able to do soon, but he, he will probably get some amount of value out of it. All right, um, we want one more land. Okay, there's our, our land. So essentially we want our generator servant to survive another turn. Um, and then, assuming all goes well, we smash him in the face of the dragon and eliminate most of his board. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. We don't have anything to do this turn. Um, so, I think we just pass and hope nothing too horrible happens. That's sort of my strategy right now. I mean, this is big enough that, like, he has to know that this could be coming, because I'm playing so much red. And this is the free release sealed. Free, you know, it's free. Uh, I have a Fohawk now. Um, let's see. Just uh, rehydrating. Uh, he's going to gain some life. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, it doesn't worry me that much. If he does this... He might want to wait to do that. He's got five mana available. More with Convoke. Okay, that I don't worry that much about, because in theory it's going to die. But he could have a Plummet. So the question is, do I want to play around Plummet? I don't think I can afford to do that. Also, Plummet seems like a card that a lot of people would sideboard. Um, I could run this out there first. But I think I just like the idea of going in there with the dragon right now. If we lose, i.e. if he has plummet, we're in a tough position. What the hell is going on here? Oh, okay. Um, that was a little odd. Alright, so we're going to try this. Is this during our main phase A? I want it to be. Yeah, pl play it. Okay, that was a little worrisome. Hopefully this actually has haste, and he doesn't have plummet. Um, is this one it... When it attacks, if defending player controls no walls, and he doesn't, unless this finds a one-drop wall, deals two damage. So then if I attack with this two... Uh, is there a one-drop wall in the set? I don't think so. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and get in there with both these guys then. Just in case this... I, I'm a little worried it's going to hibernations end out a wall. <laughs> in which case, this guy just trades with something. Uh, but so far, so good. All right. Do we have a wall coming out? Mm, 
No. That's good. Uh, and then this... Uh, oh, so he is finding something to block this. A one drop, I guess? Uh, what is happening? Maybe he'll just, like, fail to find or just clear out something from his deck to eat the uh, three damage. That would make sense. All right, yeah, I think that's what's going on. He's uh, searching his deck for Forge Devil, huh? Okay, so he's going to trade. Take one. That's, kind of, that's a cool play on his part. I was busy worried about a wall, but this was actually my concern. And that's too bad, because Paragon uh, is nuts. So, um, I should have kept, I, I should have uh, kept this guy back then. Um, now he trades for that guy who's much crappier. And his uh, Hibernation Zen guy is still online. So, if he can, like, ramp up to a way to kill this, he's in good shape. Uh, I will want to play this to reinforce this guy a little bit, because he can play that six mana burn spell to kill him. So I, I will want that to happen ASAP. Um, if he doesn't make a land drop this turn, that's less of a concern, and I might just try to assassinate this either with Burning Anger or a Covenant of Blood, um, depending on what we draw. Those are yours. I can't remember. My wife is looking for something. What are you looking for? I cannot remember. All right. Food? Cleaning supplies? Gloves? No, those are in the bathroom. Oh, okay. So he didn't do anything, and we didn't draw land. Um, that means, like, I could just murder this guy if he has nothing. I don't necessarily think that's right. I think I'm going to play this. Yes, um, And we'll attack for six, I guess. Um... This sets us up to next turn Covenant of Blood if we need to. Um, so he is playing something that, in theory, can defend here. Or he just wants to put something on the table in F6. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I can't think of a 2-drop that would... I mean, maybe a flyer? Just to block this? Or just not block it, that's fine. Or that wall. Um, all right, that, that makes sense. Um, so he just needs to pump his guy. It can be a three drop next turn. Uh, yeah, I feel pretty good about this. I can even, like, burning anger this guy. Because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. That gives me another way to kill his dudes, I guess. Huh. So, he's got to search for a 3-drop with this. This is such a cool card. I think it's especially neat for limited. Um, I hope it's good in standard. I don't know if it is, or will be, um, but it's neat. Uh, I will not be blocking this. Um, I feel like my life total is pretty high and I'm comfortable there. All right. Um, so he just passed the turn. That seems to be a good sign. Um, we can't cast that right now. Uh, I really wanted to draw another land there. <laughs> um, I'm a little nervous about what this could do. Like, that leads me to kind of want to play Burning Anger on it, but that seems super greedy. Um... Yeah, I, even though that sets him up to die next turn, I think we just attack here. This kills this guy, and it puts him at, what, just, oh, his guy just died. Okay, so he didn't have anything to do there. Um, is this going to be that spider? To block? Maybe? Maybe I should have played... What is this? 
uh, this guy is going to be cool and vintage, but uh, his green licorice isn't going to do much for him here. Um, so that puts him at four. Now, I could show him this just to... I don't think that that can be right. Because I think our game is so on lockdown with these covenants that we just um, pass the turn. And we prob if we draw a land, then we just attack and then back up Covenant, kill him. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of, like, rebel hibernations and advantage out of this guy. But I'd look at this obnoxious, like, curved square on his face. You can't even see that pirate motherfucker. Can you believe he called this guy to battle? I wonder how that worked. He played his loot, his leer, and then the Reclamation Sage came running. All right. Uh, this is in his deck. That makes our enchantments and artifacts a little worse. Worth considering. Um, means, like, our grind clock might not do that much. Might even uh, assist him in making that giant guy. Um... He might have that 4-drop that gets a plus and plus encounter for every dude in the graveyard. So I, I'm actually considering boarding out Grindclock, because he's got this and a way to find it. And then that just basically means Grindclock doesn't do anything. All right, Academy Bybot 1 win. So uh, that's us, again. Uh, we're going to go to the sideboard. Um, so we didn't actually see much except for some wimpy dudes. Um, we saw a lot of dudes with 1 toughness, so I wonder if... What did I just board in? Um, I wanted to... I didn't want to board in that at all. Um, I kind of want to board in... Not this, but he might have that other dragon in his deck, which I might need to kill with that. Or he might have uh, Phytotite, which I don't care about. Um, he's not going to have a lot of flyers. This might create problems for him, but he also has the thing that kills enchantments. Um... But it slows him down quite a bit. So I have to think about whether boarding in the Circle of Flame is worth it. Uh, I do think Grind Clock is going to come out. Um, I, I will keep that guy in there, recognizing that he could die. It's just like, this gives me no value if it puts a bunch of stuff in his turd pile and then it doesn't finish him. Uh, this doesn't do anything. All right, so... Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, he can just build up advantage with that uh, bard guy. All right. Um, maybe this is just better than Circle of Flame. I'm willing to bet. How many of my own guys does this kill? Those. Um... It only kills those. All right, so let's try this instead. Because um, it seems to kill a lot of his guys. And the question is, do we want to bring in this? I don't know. We could. Like, maybe this is better than one of the Covenants of Blood, in case he has that dragon. Huh. Yeah, I'm really tempted to do that. He can also beat us to the dragon. Um, I'm doing it. I'm cutting this. Alright. We could bring in the other one too, but uh, I like uh, mixing it up a little bit. Not sure if that's right. Alright, so let's wish our opponent good luck somehow. I don't think he's being rude not responding. I think he either thinks we're a bot or... Uh, he, uh, oh, this is kind of unfortunate. Um, I will keep this. This hand is not bad. It's just a little awkward. Like, do I search for a red? Probably. Um, because I'd probably like to play a dude instead of sign of blooding really quick. But that's awkward. Um, so anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, the way that we were able to overcome the V4 transition with our bot chain is just that I basically and a bunch of other people sit with levers. So when you type, you know, done or submit to our bots, there's just a guy controlling them. They aren't robots. They're like robots, but they're people controlling them. Okay, so we have that now. 
So the question is, I think I lead off with the Evolving Wilds um, anyway. I probably still find a Mountain because I think I'll be playing a Generator Servant next turn, but uh, I just want to clear lands out of my deck because I don't necessarily want to draw a bunch of them right away. All right, that thing. Um, we'll drop this as a blocker, and I think I will just block it. Probably. I don't want him to convoke something insane out. So I probably would be willing to trade. All right, so we'll find a mountain. That's fine. Um, that card makes our creatures a little bit more valuable. It makes this guy a bit more valuable, too, though he could kill it. Um, let's play a swamp. Let's not screw that up. And I will drop this guy. I don't know whether I want to block yet, though. Because um, we have a Convoke guy, as I mentioned. And also, this guy has uh, utility with a mana cost thing. He's an interesting ramp dude. Yeah, so our opponent looks like he wants to trade here. He could also have a... Uh, like a pump spell, Titanic Growth or something. Um, I think I'm going to block. I think I'm willing to make this trade. I think he's just scared of what happened last game, but we're going to have another one of these anyway. All right. So they just both go to the turd pile. He didn't convoke anything super scary out. What do we have here? All right. That's, that's a cool card. Uh, I like that guy. That guy's neat. Uh, loses Defender and gains Flying for a bunch of mana. This gives us something to do with our mana that I uh, approve of. So, um, this does not have Reach, even though I could imagine it would. And we're going to play this guy now for the sake of mana efficiency. We could have played the Generator Servant and then like done something fancy, but I don't care to do that. All right. So if he just attacks me this turn, I'll feel pretty good, because it means he's not really doing anything else. Um, I, I doubt that that's going to happen, though. He might just leave it back. And, nope, so it looks like we'll be able to get in. It's going to be a 4-drop. Oh, no, he just activated it. Well, that's great. So he's we're just trading damage. He's not doing anything for this turn, and he does one extra damage to me. That is A-OK. -okay. Um, and we have to play the Swamp before signing in Blood which I think is okay. Um, we also could play Burning Anger, but no, we couldn't, actually. I'm going to target myself, so this gives him a little bit of an edge uh, in terms of uh, life, but we just saw a bunch of good cards, and we can drop this guy now, and this thing's nuts. Um, so I feel like we're in pretty good shape. We are not going to block that guy. And so I will attack. I probably should have attacked before combat, but I don't think he can do anything with just the one in this format. Uh, and by attack before combat, I mean attack before casting spells. Um, all right. So I wonder how hard it's going to be to, to tap this to convoke the Willforge Golem out. Oh, that's too bad. All right, so um, he's going to murder our guy. Uh, I think we can live with that. It's unfortunate. Um, I believe also the 2-1 that kills artifacts or enchantments says May, which means he could have played it now. It's not like he just wouldn't have done it. Um, so I'm not sure if the Willforge Golem lives. If he has that, I think we're in really bad shape, actually. The, like, dryad-y thing, that's too bad. We would have been able to do that same thing this turn. Um, all right. So... Why does it do that? We'll, we'll play this. <laughs> um, we can play the Willforge Golem, but that creates a situation where we're in big trouble if he can just murder it. I'd almost rather kill this. If he has Lightning Strike, that means he can just finish this off. Um, so slow to get this. I want to draw, like, another land so I can Grave Dig and find it in the same turn. I think I want to get this guy online, and we can actually play Burning Anger on him. Like, the question is, do I uh, attack with a Carrion Crow here or not? Or do I keep it back as a second blocker to avoid taking an additional one? I think... Yeah. 
that we get in there. Actually, well, he could have another Forge Devil, so I'm not, I don't exactly want to block with a Carrion Crow anyway. So, if he attacks with a Forge Devil, I will most likely not block it with the Nightfire Giant. Um, that's just going to be how we play this. Um, I wish these cards were bigger. I can do that. Look at this guy. This guy's on purple fire. He looks like something right out of Ocarina of Time. This thing looks like Somerville, where I live. These are like the pigeons, and this is like the guy who hangs out in my front stoop. All right. Um, this is just me. Actually, this looks more like Chris Cool. All right. So he's on six. That's kind of scary. He could he could be getting to a point where he wants to play something like this. Um, we could play Burning Anger on our guy and then make it suck. Like, if we can get a Burning Anger on this guy, it's sort of redundant because we're, like, tapping the guy who's... Oh. He just skipped combat. That's that's a pretty good sign. Um, it means he is keeping his mana open, though. So the question is... Can he kill the Nightfire Giant right now instant speed? Because if he has that thing that we boarded in, the six mana instant, he could do it, and that would suck. It would suck real hard. Um, like, I don't necessarily want to lose for that reason. So I think it might be the wrong play to do that. Um, what I kind of want to do instead is play Gravedigger and find... Actually, we might want to keep the Gravedigger in case he kills this. Uh, that's that's a little slow going, but seems reasonable to me. Um, okay, so if he was going to kill this... That... I feel like he must have something to kill that. That's where I am right now. So I can Gravedigger and put the Generator Servant back in, or I can hold on to the Gravedigger, or I can just Burning Anger this, waste a turn, but then get it back later. I just worry that that's too slow. Um, he might also just have nothing. That's also possible. And this already does good just sitting there. Yeah. Um... I'm I'm really, really tempted to just pass the turn. And then use its ability as needed. I worry that gives him just more turns to do stuff. But I'm going to do it. I think that the Nightfire Giant with Burning Anger is just like a good way to win. <laughs> so I don't want to blow my opportunity. If he doesn't do anything this turn, then I learn that it's probably safe to just put Burning Anger on the Nightfire Giant. But right now, he could be... Nope, he didn't do it. All right, so I, I, I think now the next turn will be safe. He plays his seventh land. That could mean Siege Dragon's coming down, but in theory, that means we can just kill it with Burning Anger. Hmm. Lord of the Rings! Okay. Need to rehydrate. Oh, that sucks. Alright, so we can kill this fairly easily. Uh, you can make one of our guys not block. Um, okay, that's not the end of the world, for sure. Uh, he might attack with this, I guess. We get pinged in the face. I don't know. He can't. He can't do much. If he, he might just try to build this up for now. Okay, fine. So this thing can't block. Maybe he attacks in the air. If he does that, then I just totally ram into Forge Devil. Okay. And by ramming into Forge Devil, what I mean is kill his Chandra. 
Not sure why I chose to say it that particular way. All right, so I'm okay with this. We just take three. I feel like this is a sign of desperation. Maybe he just realized that? I'm not sure. Um, what the hell is going on? I'm trying to... Is there some reason I have to block this? Oh my god. So, was that just, like, click lag? Okay. Okay, we're okay. That wasn't, that wasn't the end of the world. Um, we're just gonna myrtleize this thing. And then swing and kill Chandra, I think. Yeah, that, that seems reasonable. All right. Um, the real question is, do I just want to attack him? Because he's going to die very quickly. <laughs> uh, that means we can just play Siege Dragon. That seems good. All right, so... Yeah. Why don't we just play this mountain? Um... I, we're going to attack some cool dude, in particular this cool dude, and we're going to attack Chandra Pyromaster. All right, so we're going to murder these two things, and then hopefully this turn will be very disappointing for him as I play Siege Dragon again. All right, cool. So he's a 13. That means he dies very soon. Um, and I feel pretty strongly that we're in a good position here. And his thing dies. Wait. No, it kills walls, not creatures with Defender. Lame. <laughs> okay. Um, that's fine. I guess. I wish it said kills creatures with Defender. Why does it say walls? How many walls don't have Defender? I mean, I guess it wouldn't make sense for this to kill, like, Konda's Yojimbo or whatever, that fox guy. What am I trying to say? He's still doing something. He's not just conceding. Okay. Is he going to kill me with the remaining cards in his hand? Because I'm at 8. Um, but this can't attack unless he taps 3 more. Okay. Um. Well, I'm definitely going to block here. I, I think... Uh, Leaving myself open to a lightning strike would be a bad decision. Uh, so he can either dome me for two. What what just happened? Oh, that was disappointing. All right, so his guy is still alive. That's kind of scary, actually. Uh, we can just kill it with this and attack him for seven. And I think doing that is right because we gain a bunch of life. Um, the other thing we could do is some other stuff, but I don't really care. Um, yeah, this seems right. Okay, cool. We'll two for, we'll gain a bunch of life, and I think basically put him out of range for winning this game. Um, so, that was a pretty strong rip. I think we would have been okay anyway, but um, that was pretty good. So the question is, do we have to worry about anything hasting into us and killing us? I don't think so, because he has one card in hand. Um, I just want to end this as quickly as possible now. Okay, look at this guy. I know I already keep talking about him. He's got a big sword. Um, this is classic, isn't it? Look at this body. I don't like this card. I'm, I get too nervous about playing it. This guy, his arms are not quite touching each other. I'm not sure how that works. His ligaments don't really work. This lady is writing in a language I don't know. And not very well, actually. Handwriting is very good. All right. So I'm glad I didn't play this Willforge Golem earlier. I, I mean, he could have just ripped us. I don't know. So I, I think he just loses here. Um, because I think I just kill this and then get through for damage. Unless he, like, Titanic growths it. I mean, he could have, like, a fog. That would be pretty irritating, I guess. But I think we probably have it here. Oh. <laughs> I 
Okay, um, so now he's down to zero cards, and he's still alive. That's reasonable. He goes to one. He needs to find a way to eliminate this right now, in other words. He, he could. I don't know. But I imagine he's just going to concede. What's going to happen? If he plays a blocker, that's not enough. He needs to somehow... Okay, we got it. All right, so I will see you guys next round. Hello, everybody. We're back for round two. We are playing against the lovely Weston MC. Uh, hopefully this gets to him and not our previous opponent. I'm not exactly sure entirely how that works just yet. It's uh, waiting for me to... Re oh, here. Uh, this hand is mediocre. Uh, I can haste out a generator servant and replay it. Eh? We'll keep this. So this hand is like on curve, but it doesn't have anything really powerful. Um, what we don't want to see are more lands. Like, this is the sort of hand that I wish I had that cycling thing for. All right. Um, okay, that's not what we wanted to see. Uh, we could draw a sign in blood, so I want to play the swamp first. Um, I mean, I, I think I just play everything on curve. He probably has a stop set, but he can't figure out why or how to fix that, I guess. Uh, okay, there we go. Are we recording? I hope we are. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell. If he doesn't have anything on this turn, I feel a little bit better. And it doesn't appear that he did. Now, hmm. That we could put on this crow, and even though crows don't have fists, I guess one could come out of its fucking head like... What am I thinking of? Green Lantern? Alright. Yeah, so let's plan on doing that, I guess. Um, we could just swing at him for four next turn and throw this away, and then play a Gravedigger. That doesn't seem extraordinary. Uh, he's going to gain some life. Huh. I actually... <laughs> I almost want to do that, because I can Gravedig him back. But maybe just having a 4-2 in the air isn't that strong. It's probably not. Um, so let's just uh, play a normal game, put him back at 20, not accidentally sacrifice this. I hate this red zone. Doesn't feel more like a war. Feels more like my cards are all moving around the table. All right, um, I'll play another mountain here. Seems right to me because this thing requires two red, and I might play the wrong land next turn. You know how it goes. Um, all right, so my opponent is now potentially at five. Yep. Um, if we draw, no, we can't play our dragon if we draw it. Um, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? All right, um, he's trying to make this work somehow. That sucks. We're going to lose a dude, but we can we can grave dig him back. So I don't really want to grave dig this back, so I almost would rather he kill this. Uh, Meteorite is such a cool card. Um, okay, so he was scared of something big. That's interesting. Now, I don't know about playing this Inferno Fist. Um, I would really like to play that last or this turn. It's kind of a bummer. Um, okay, so what are our options? Uh, we'll play a Swamp. Now we can play Gravedigger, return this attack for two. That gives us enough creatures that we can... I'm probably not going to want to Convoke this. Probably just want to keep attacking, I think. Um, and then this is the guy that we Convoke. I'm not sure that we want to do that. Um, but I do think... I'm sorry, by Convoke I mean the guy we want to cast. I'm worried about wasting this Inferno Fist. But I'm going to do it... I'm just not sure that this is right. Um, I like the idea of getting damage in and keeping this up so I can at least shock something if it hits play. Um, he's got a ton of mana, which is super scary. Um, and then next turn we can keep red open for it and play the Grave Digger if we need to. Uh, or if he plays a blocker, we can just play this Golem. One moment. Hey, Becky, there's coffee in here if you want it. I think you never took it. All right. Um, or maybe his hand just sucks and all he has is ramp. Thank you. Huh? Thank you. You're welcome. 
Um, no, it looks like he's got something. Maybe this is Fido Hydra. Fido Titan. Okay, that's a 4-3 haste. That guy's big. I know, our living room is clean. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's gonna smack me for four, and we're gonna be trading blows probably for a couple turns. I will gladly play this. I worry it'll die. Um, oh! Hmm, that's an interesting option. Um, okay. So, I definitely think I attack here. This is good to know. This means we can either win a race or kill a dude. Um, yeah. That's yeah. basically what it means. Yeah. My wife likes mocking me. I love mocking She loves it. You bet she loves it. All right. Um, so I will play the Gravedigger here. Just in an attempt to keep the pressure on. Um, I guess, like, these guys with two toughness are bad because my opponent could just play the same dragon that we have. Um, and then we'll pass the turn. So let me think about this. Next turn, we can hit him for... Uh, Eight on board plus the stoke the flames. So if he attacks and has no blocker, we win. I mean, he doesn't know that because this is in our hand. Um, so we played another land. I think I'm okay with that because I'm not really worried about eight mana. I was worried about seven, but not really eight. So if he gets in there, I'm just taking it. Because I, I mean, he's got to do something here, I think. I don't think he wouldn't do anything. But I don't just want to throw away Grave Digger either. Um, so, yeah. He's just going to pass. What does he have? Fog? Maybe? Alright. Um, that doesn't give any of my current guys bonus of any kind. Uh, I will play this right now, though. Um, Alright. So, I'm going to attack. I, I don't think he's going to flash anything in. My guess is that this just means, like, burn spell is going to come and hit one of my guy's faces. Um, but we'll get in there. See what happens. Alright, yeah. So something is happening. Oh my god. Something big. What is this? Heat ray? Probably? Court of Calling for five, huh? Okay. Um, that's scary. What do you got, buddy? Hopefully, uh, it's probably a two for one of some kind. Uh, let's make sure we can respond. Whoop! Look, all of them called in that uh, Sabertooth Mammoth Titan answered. What is this? This is a 4 4? Um, that thing's super scary. I think we might kill that before blockers. Um, it's gonna eat the Gravedigger. We could set up to kill him next turn in the air otherwise, but I think removing this guy is essential. Um, I think. What is happening? No, pay, pay all this mana. So let's murder that. Um, get through for six. Seems okay. And, in theory, we can still threaten to win in the air next turn. I'm going to play a blocker instead of keep Inferno Fist open. Not sure how correct that is. Um, that also gives us an additional creature. So, okay, he's got a blocker on the ground. We get to see some of his deck. That means uh, if we click here... We go like this. Uh, he's got one of those ladies and one of those gentlemen. All right. Um, maybe he just concedes here, I think. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He could, in theory, burn me out with two of these. I think. Because this is the 8th. 
Mm, so he would have to have two of those in his hand, but... Oh, well, I guess he made the decision for me. I was going to block. All right, so let's begin sideboarding. Hidden cards. What? I, I don't understand why it does that. All right, so let's sort by converted mana cost. We saw a giant, a bunch of ramp, uh, something that killed a two drop, uh, satyr, some guys with two toughness. Um, yeah, I don't... Again, he could be playing the dragon, so maybe we want Blast Firebolt? I don't know. Um, do we see an artifact we care about? I don't remember seeing an artifact we care about. Um, we saw a Court of Calling. I guess that makes this a little better, because we can respond by, like, killing a giant guy. Um, he's got that 4-4 four, four Ogre that can become a 6-6. Six, six. This doesn't really help against that that much. Just as much as these do. But I kind of like the instant speed. Um, we'll bring in one again. I'm not sure how I feel about that. This grind clock he didn't see, and I didn't see any easy way for him to kill it, so that could still be a win con for us. Um... Yeah, uh, not sure we need any of this stuff, like Thundering Giant or whatever, Child of Night doesn't do much there. Uh, let's roll with what we got. Um, this deck didn't seem all that fast to me, so I think Grind Clock is still relevant, and he didn't see an artifact, because we kept our 4-4 four, four for 6 in our hand, our, like, worse of Senyuj Golem. Um, his hand's fine, I guess. Our opponent kept. Um, we will keep this. A little slow. This guy can't block the first time he comes down. I could worry about his two drop that hits us twice in a row. The uh, three two lady, wearing the like femme outfit. Uh, by femme outfit, I mean you know one of those ridiculous coats of armor that's designed to enhance feminine physique instead of be functional. Uh, all right. So what do we have here? Okay, that could, that could make for a scary next turn, I suppose. Uh, we drew another guy that uh, stays tapped. Uh, when he hits the battlefield, so that's no good. Um, what's the worst he could do on his turn? I don't know. This guy basically, like, dies in Convoke to make an extra. It's, it's still fine, I guess. I, I, I like this guy. I think it's a neat creature. Um, there's a lot of tension in him. Because you're like, do I attack with him? Or push through some extra damage? Or do I use him to put all my eggs in one basket? It's a very good red type of card. All right, so that's good, because it doesn't look like he's playing another creature this turn, which I guess just makes me think that his deck is slow, like I thought. Um, all right, so we will drop uh, Carrion Crow. Not the most exciting thing, but fine. Uh, I might actually toss him in front of the Generator Servant when I get a chance later. can always Grave Dig him. Um, yeah. Uh, last game, our play actually worked really well. Um, dropping the fist on the, the green lantern, red lantern on this thing. Going, ah! All right, so here we take another two. That's fine. And he missed his land drop, which is curious. Um, it's like the question is, do I get in there? I think I do now that he missed his land drop. Um, we have some life we're going to gain back with Covenant. And then this is going to hit the turn after we attack here. So... I'm okay not having any blockers. Um, why? That's weird. I wonder why his hand is bad. That's sort of what I'm thinking. Um, all right. Come on, crow buddy. Uh, all right. We also have Burning Anger again, which is that card that I didn't actually effectively use earlier. Um, and this guy. This guy is a beast, man. I love him. Oh, there's a mountain in the background. He's, like, bigger than the mountain. Unless that's, like, a small, rocky cove. I'm not sure. I don't know how he works. Don't ask me. I know that this there's a lot of blood in this card and a lot of clan members, it looks like. That makes me uncomfortable. Um, all right, Typhoid Rats. Not exactly the best card right now. Um, he's still stuck at three. It seems pretty good. Uh, I will just drop this guy, and I will block with him. Because I can Grave Dig, and if I remove this guy in a Burn Spell or a Combat Trick, that is fine. Especially because Titanic Growth will just get eaten anyway. Alright, 
So him going to 14 here seems really good for me. Um, I think this game is very promising right now with him being caught at 3. Uh, do we want to hit a land next turn? Yeah, we do. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. Uh, it would be cool because we could play Typhoid Rats and keep this guy open a burn. Um, but like I said, I would actually block probably. Even though he could like burn this off somehow. Yeah, I think so. Um, it would just cost him so much in terms of cards that I think it would be worth doing. Even though, like, leaving this guy on the board probably means a game win. Because, like, I can kill this and attack for 9, putting him at 5. Yeah, that's strong. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, if he does something weird, like plays a land before attacking, that causes me to reconsider. Um... He doesn't know if he wants to do it. All right, so I'm really starting to think this through again. Because he seems mana screwed, I'm really tempted to kill this guy. I can grave dig this. So we're, we're blocking. Not sure if this is the right play. I mean, maybe the right play is just winning on my turn. I, I don't know. Or maybe his move was just one of desperation and try and push through damage? Nope, lightning strike. Okay, so we, we ate two cards. That's that's okay. Um, uh, we drew land here. Actually, probably the best land I could hope for. Um, we're going to attack, and then hopefully if I don't screw up the you know new client, we're going to play a land and uh, play a Typhoid Rats and a Gravedigger. That seems really good. All right, so here's the Rats. Okay, here's the wilds, and here's the digger. Cool. Um, yes, I am going to want to return that to my hand. That might earn a concession. Got a lot of pressure on the board. All right, cool. Um, huh. So he did have to spend his lightning strike. He might have another one. That means he held that back for a while. Uh, I need to yield because I don't want to... Okay, that guy's scary, but he's not going to do anything right now. We're, we're going to be fine. Um, we can actually play Burning Anger on this and then attack for six. That's probably the way to do it, and I think that means we just win the game. Uh, I guess it creates a situation where... Um, I don't know. They could gain some value. If we play this, we could draw land. That seems wrong to me. Um, oh, he's starting a chat. Okay. Fourth land was too light. Was a nice hand. Sorry about the mana troubles. All right. They happen to anyone. Or everyone, rather. Um, can we kill him? I want to do this. I don't care if this is right or not. Um... We could have attacked with everybody, and eh, that would have been wrong. All right, kill this. Death touch him. Oh, he was touched by death. All right, so I could have signed in blood looking for another land, um, and then play the burning anger. That would have been wrong, I think. Um, all right, so let's see. Ladies and gentlemen, I like it when opponents are like, you know, I was looking forward to doing this, but it didn't work out. And then you can sort of bond over it. I like when that happens. I don't like when someone's like, hey, nard face, you sucked because you drew luckily. And you're like, yeah, I was pretty lucky. Um, but you don't know me. All right. Had a pretty nice play if I draw a land there. Probably cone. <laughs> All right. It was probably cone of flame or cone of fire or whatever. Um... So he concedes, and we will move on to round three soon.